Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some NBA with the thousands of true school sports and subscribers. What's going on, guys? Now, I'm going to talk about kind of I'm going to talk about a team that really there was no reason to talk much about during the NBA season because number one, they weren't very good. Number two, they were bad, but they weren't like comic. They weren't, they weren't like haha funny bad like the Sixers. They were just bad. And the team I'm talking about is the Brooklyn Nets. Now, Brooklyn, when you say that name. When you, when, you, when you talk about that, see, that, that that comes with a lot of pride. And with the way the Nets have dealt with the franchise has operated over the last couple of years with the Paul Pierce, the, the, the hilarious Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce trade to Brooklyn where they gave the Celtics, like, uh, first-round picks for, like, the next four years. The Celtics are still reaping off of that trade. It just looks really bad for Brooklyn. And I finally got a chance to go to the Barclays Center to cover boxing. But Barclays Center, hands down, the nicest NBA arena I've ever been to. So um, I don't see why anybody w would want to play in that sort of facility playing in New York City. Um, makes a lot of sense if you're a basketball player trying to, trying to um, make a name for themselves and uh, kind of like grow your business, I guess, if you're, if you're looking from a business perspective. But um, anyway, what, what this video is about was the Brooklyn Nets. They're going to be, you know, this, this draft is very important for them. Um, you know, this draft is important for every franchise, but it's also important for them because they're they're one of those teams that are in heavy rebuild rebuild mode, um, and they got they got to really build the pool of talent in Brooklyn. Um, so, an article came out on NetsDaily.com, which is the Brooklyn Nets section of SB Nation. Shout out to them, uh, basically saying that Kenny Atkinson, who was uh, the I think the lead is a GM now. The new, uh, the new coach. The lead is the new coach. I forgot what he was. But whatever. Kenny Atkinson, uh, in its introductory press conference, was talking about, you know, Brooke, how Brooklyn is basketball and, you know, how they got to bring that sort of Brooklyn toughness to the team. But they never really had a guy from Brooklyn play for the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, they're still a young franchise, but still, they haven't had a Brooklyn guy play for the Brooklyn Nets. I was surprised that. They didn't give um, any thought into getting Lance Stevenson, but there's a Brooklyn, there's a there's a highly touted. Well, I wouldn't say it's highly touted, but he'll go in the second round because of him coming out so early. Um, there's a highly touted, highly skilled um, player from Seton Hall University. Name is Isaiah Whitehead. I'm a fan of his game. Uh, he's six four, six five, two hundred and ten pounds. He can dribble. Um, you know, just a, a beast. When you watch him play, he has a lot of skills and He's from Brooklyn, and he's already came out and he said that, you know, he want he would love it'd be a dream come true for him to play for the Brooklyn Nets. Now, this move should they draft him because he's projected to go later in the second round. Um, should they take Whitehead? Um, it makes sense for him because Isaiah Whitehead's a guy that number one would sell some jerseys. He's from he's from Brooklyn. He went to Lincoln High School. If you guys don't know Lincoln High School. Uh, Lincoln High School produced the likes of Stephon Marbury, Lance Stevenson, Sebastian Telfair. He would be the first guy from Lincoln High School to play for the Brooklyn Nets. And how much more Brooklyn can Brooklyn get by drafting Isaiah Whitehead? And not just that, when you talk about Isaiah Whitehead, he's 21 years old. He's six foot five. You feel like at 210 pounds, he'll probably mature into his body a little bit more as um, as he matures in the NBA. Um, when we talk about Isaiah Whitehead, he's, he's coming from a college in Seton Hall where they play in a conference, which is you know the Big East, the Big East, which you know features a lot, some of the best college basketball teams in the world. You know, uh, Big East tournament, very legendary guys like you know Kemba Walker made the name in the Big East tournament. Tournament. He was the most outstanding player in the Big East tournament, and to be the most outstanding player, to be named the most outstanding player in the Big East tournament. You gotta have, you gotta number one produce, but you gotta, you're, you're producing against top level competition, and you know I know a lot, a lot has been made of some of these European guys. Um, I know you had this, I forgot his name, but you had, you had that one Chinese guy, the seven foot five guy that everybody's hyping up now. You have Thon Maker, who uh, is didn't really go to college, but is is eligible for the NBA draft because of you know his postgraduate high school thing he did. Anyway. People are questioning his level of competition and how battle-tested is he and how much of a project is he, really. Teams might view Whitehead as a project in, in some ways, but he played in the Big East. And when it comes to college basketball, you know, you have the ACC, and then after that, arguably right there, the Big East. So um, I think Whitehead would be a great fit for the Nets. He would bring some toughness to the team. 
he would definitely be an improvement at the guard spot and and in, in late in the second round if he's still there mid late second round he's worth taking a flyer on I, I, honestly I'll be honest, I haven't really studied the draft like that, but I don't even know why the hell he's projected so low. He's got, the guy can play. I've watched him play a couple times, and it's crazy to me how he's projected so low. But maybe a team drafts him higher than he's projected. It happens all the time in the NBA draft. But, yeah, man, that's the news. Um, it said right here in a couple reports. It said uh, it would be a dream play for the Nets. And um, I also said I wanted to add this in there. The Nets are very interested in taking Whitehead if he is there in the second round. So there you have it. Um, just as a little project, uh, a little measuring stick, here's where some outlets have him projected at in the draft. Jab Express has him at 58th. Um, the Nets pick at 55. And Chad Ford of ESPN, who does the draft boards every year, he has uh, Whitehead projected at number 51. So, um, you know, obviously a lot of where he goes depends on how he teams in front of them draft. But I would like to see it. Um, I'm a fan of guys organically. I emphasize the word organically. Organically going to play for their hometown teams. Not when it's convenient for them, LeBron James, to go play for their hometown teams. Now, hopefully Isaiah Wyatt can go to the Nets and make some noise there. Exciting player. Uh, Brooklyn to the core. I think it would be a good move for them. Let me, let me know what you guys think. Isaiah Whitehead to the Brooklyn Nets. Is, is it a good move? Leave your comments down below. Take the time to subscribe. And you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.